The Met Office is the UK's National Weather Service. We are the providers of the National Severe Weather Warning Service, delivering Category 1 and 2 responders critical information to help plan and prepare for severe weather. The National Severe Weather Warning Service is a world-leading impact-based warning service, combining the level of impact the weather is expected to have and the likelihood of those impacts occurring. You can access these Met Office warnings via Hazard Manager, public website, app, or sign up to receive them directly. It's important to understand how the matrix works, so you can take the appropriate action as a responder. With the colour coding linked to both likelihood and impacts, it's essential to check the position of the tick in the matrix on every warning. Just because a warning is yellow, it doesn't mean it can be ignored. It could predict a potential high impact event, but with a very low likelihood, such as a damaging storm on an uncertain track. Here's an example of how the National Severe Weather Warning Matrix is used in practice. On Monday, the Met Office issues a yellow warning and emails the warning to responders in the warning area. Take note of these warnings, they are only sent if the impacts are likely to be medium or high. This is what the matrix looks like at this time. There are some strong winds due later in the week in Responder A's local authority area. It's a low likelihood warning, but looking at the impact level, it could bring some disruption in the area and affect an outdoor event that is planned on Thursday afternoon, creating issues in regard to safety of the public. Consideration also needs to be given to potential closures of a suspension bridge which links communities either side of the river. Warnings may cover a large area, so it may not be obvious from the validity time when these winds are expected in one particular place. Responder A discusses with their Met Office advisor how the severe weather might impact their area, particularly with regard to the outdoor event. Here, the strongest winds are expected later on Wednesday night into early on Thursday morning, but the timing of them could change. It's important to regularly check for updates, as they become more detailed and accurate over time. Responder A informs other people in their department about the expected weather and contacts the event organisers to ensure they are aware. It's important to look out for warning updates to the National Severe Weather Warning Service. These can be viewed in Hazard Manager, along with other weather information that will allow you to monitor the developing situation. Here is an example of why it's important to keep checking for updates. It's 24 hours later, and we can see that yesterday's yellow warning has been updated to amber. And looking at the matrix, the likelihood of medium impacts occurring has increased. The forecast is looking more certain. Responder A needs to think about what this means for their organisation and partner organisations. If the strongest winds are expected during Wednesday night, closure of the bridge will only bring minor disruption and an event on Thursday afternoon should most likely be unaffected. But there are other considerations, especially if the winds continue into Thursday morning. Many staff commute from the east across a suspension bridge into the town. Strong winds can result in the closure of this bridge, meaning a 40-mile detour. Responder A needs to consider the possibility of a bridge closure impacting on the arrival time of their staff on Thursday morning. Responder B, from the emergency services based at a station in the west of town, may need to provide emergency response on the eastern side of the bridge and therefore needs to consider pre-deploying vehicles prior to any bridge closures. So, there's a lot to consider, and the planned outdoor event will lead to a large increase in traffic later on Thursday morning. Responder B talks to their Lead Resilience partner to decide whether they should have a multi-agency teleconference. It's day three, and Responder A is on call. He tells a colleague that the Met Office has updated the warning, but it's still amber. So what's changed? If you said nothing, you'd be wrong. By looking at the matrix, we can see that the warning has changed. The likelihood is still medium, but the level of impact has increased to high. The warning states that the weather forecast isn't greatly different, but the strongest winds are during the afternoon and evening of Thursday. 
including the evening rush hour. Therefore, the level of impact is now higher because more people are likely to be outdoors, putting them in greater danger. The likely closure of the bridge will also cause a great deal of disruption, with high traffic volumes expected as the public arrive for the planned event. The Lead Resilience Partner has called a teleconference, meaning all responders will get the latest weather information from the Met Office advisor and can also ask for clarification if needed. Based on the discussions in the teleconference, the responders take the decision to cancel the outdoor event and also prepare for the expected weather conditions. Media messages are being relayed to make sure that people know the event has been cancelled. If Responder B had not been aware of the different types of amber warnings, they wouldn't have realised that they could be facing a high-impact weather event tomorrow. Through regular updates and an understanding of the National Severe Weather Warning Matrix, all parties are now prepared for very disruptive conditions tomorrow. To use the matrix effectively, look at the combination of likelihood and impact for decision making. Although a red warning indicates a high likelihood of high impacts, don't ignore high impact yellow and amber warnings. These are issued with a lower likelihood than a red warning, but the outcome could be the same. Check the validity time. The level of impact can change depending on the time of day it occurs. The same weather event during the day or at night can have very different impacts. It's likely that some changes to the forecast will occur, and so it's important to look out for updates to warnings and forecasts. Small changes in the expected track of a storm can make a marked difference in the level of impacts on the ground. For more information, please contact your Met Office Civil Contingencies Advisor.